All right. I'm going to be giving a speech on TDB. It's a TypeScript embedded database written by myself and my friend Travis Storles, who works in Colorado for a machine learning company. I work for uh, Park Energy downtown. Um, mostly I just, I'm their sole developer, and we needed a database to run for Electron. Um, so let's get into, I guess we just tap it. All right. So um, the problem is we need a database for Electron, React Native, um, but we don't want to have MongoDB or SQL, and we want to have it just come straight down to just downloading it like a third-party package, like a JS package, like NPN or with Yarn or something. Um, right now, there are AnyDB, TaffyDB, LokiJS, there is LevelDB, and TingoDB. They all have solutions, but a lot of them might actually be more like MongoDB or actually use MongoDB anyways. So you'd have to have the binaries if you're going to download it and ship it with um, Electron, which becomes a problem if you're trying to build for Windows and you're on a Mac. So uh, NDB, NDB and a couple of others have issues where they actually, in the binary tree, they'll have the entire like objects held in memory, which is a problem if you have really large databases. And that's what we need to have for our solution is have like millions of objects and still need to search it and have it on a portable system. So our solution is uh, we kind of took the ideas from NEDB and a couple others and their pull requests. Also, many of the developers that made those have abandoned their projects, and so they're not being updated anymore. Ours is an active development. Uh, right now, it's actually ready for deployment. We actually use it right now in ours for our uh, Electron app for our company. Our AVL binary tree does not hold the objects in memory. They just hold the keys to the objects. And so you can actually save the entire index to memory instead of like having to, every time you load up a database, you have to read all the objects, then index them all, then they're in memory. But that takes a lot of time, so what we do is we save the whole index into a JSON file, and then you load it up, and it takes a second or less. Like, not a whole second, like a millisecond. Um, it's kind of like uh, SQL for MongoDB, though. So we have all the same, like, functionality of where you do, like, not equal to... I don't know how many of you are MongoDB programmers. Anybody? Okay, we got a couple. Um, so, yeah, like, if you're going to convert to MongoDB, which our company uses... Um, we have our data shipped back over to our Electron app. It's a lot easier to, rather than using SQLite, have some kind of smaller database deal with this problem. So this would be more specific. We actually have storage drivers instead of a set way of saving data. So we have to make storage drivers specific for each um, platform. So Electron, React Native, Raspberry Pi, or browser. Um, you could probably get away with using other, like NEDB or the other ones for browsers, since they are in memory mostly. Um, but for Electron, React Native, and Raspberry Pi, you want to have like an on-system downloadable like piece of software instead of having to get SQLite or MongoDB and have a server running in the background. So I'm going to show you an example of a storage driver interface. And the cool thing about TypeScript is you kind of get to make your own interface. Oh, I guess I can actually show this to you. How do I get this over? Oh, I'm just trying to show this. <laughs> there you go. All right, so the database, it's kind of like you make a schema for it, and you have your set items. This is actually for TEDB, and if you're going to make a storage driver for this, you would have to follow this format and have all these items act a certain way. Also, if you ever have any questions, I'm always available to answer any of them. Um, they have to have these functions and do a certain amount of work and be safe. So also the storage, oh, sorry, it's, uh... is that better? Okay, so yeah, um, right now our Electron database, our Electron storage driver that I wrote uh, takes advantage of all these and it has to be really safe because our guys also are working on laptops that will just shut down randomly and so their writes will get just destroyed. So we have to save their past, their past data, and so there's sanitization and other methods that you need to have. Well, let's go back to the slide. 
And here is creating a collection, kind of like MongoDB, MongoDB collections. Um, you'll have with Mongoose, oh wait, it's over here now. All right. Let's, is the font still big enough? All right. So um, you'll have your pre-save, post-save, all these. Uh, you can add more. Um, it's up to you. This is just an example of a class. This is the class actually used for the electron storage driver for TEDB. And come down here. And so we have events, and you have a promise for those events instead of having just a regular event. Examples of actually getting the constructor and all this is ready for you to look at. And if you come down here, let's see, right about, yeah. So this is where you would actually make the users. You import all the actual parts of the database. You create the collection. You add unique, non-unique, which indices you want to actually make indexes on. You cannot currently make indexes on null right now. Um, I am debating with Travis on if we should allow that or not. Um, having index on null just seems kind of odd, but I know people might need it, I guess. Uh, here is where you would make your event promise. Um, obviously, I don't have anything in it, and you can have anything you want to put in. You just have to change your own actual storage driver the way it works. Um, you just set the event, add your promise to it, and then here you would export your collection. Index checker, index your fields, unique, non-unique index, and that just gets your, your collection ready to import your index. And since we have the index saved on the, on the server already, you can just load your index and then you're ready to go. And let's go back. So let's move on to specs right now. Oh, wait, went back one. There we go. So right now, currently, the electron storage driver with 100,000 objects uh, inserting. Right now, we have it set up to, it's kind of split with an IO problem. So every file is an object. And the reason that is is so we don't have to save a binary tree of the location of the data in the file. We just have the, um, so Linux, Microsoft Word, like Microsoft OS and Mac OS all have a binary tree automatically for the data files. So we can have up to, I think, 4.3 billion files in a directory. And so you should be able to, you should be pretty fine with that amount of uh, objects. Uh, the index is saved along with the files and then you have a backup but around 1.4 milliseconds for a find uh, with no index, four to 15 milliseconds. Obviously, you can see the other numbers. Update takes a little longer because you can have multiplication, uh, move, renames, and all the update methods. Uh, there's a bit of more specific methods on TEDB, but I don't really have the time to get into all those. There is a lot. So what we are looking for is some help. Uh, we want to continue to grow, have more people get involved. Uh, right now we're working with Feathers.js uh, to get on React Native. They're really looking forward to that. And we have just haven't gotten to it yet because I have a full-time job and now I'm starting to get into more full-time. And my friend is also really busy. And yeah, questions? Uh, what ideal use case? For like this? Ideal use case? Uh, definitely Electron would, for me, is what my ideal use case is. A lot of people say they really want a uh, React Native for it. So I, the interface for React Native, though, has, it's almost like local storage, how that works. So I feel like that is not the best use case. But Electron or Raspberry Pi, for me, probably would be the best use case. Like embed or apps? Yeah. You would have like a, so for us, on our company, we have an Electron app that we build on Mac. And then we shoot it up to an S3 bucket. And then they download it when I send them the link. But they don't get any of the data, and I don't want them to have any binaries that I have to send up there and build and have problems with that. So they just get the data, pull it down from our server, and it saves. It doesn't matter how large the data set is because it can handle it. The other problem with the old, um, like NADB and all those things, they had a limit. 300 megabytes was the files, like the max collection size. So did you hear any other questions?
Oh, um, so like if you want to save a whole file? Uh, if you want to make a storage driver for it, yeah. Okay. It's, if you, yeah, if you'd want to make, uh, that's the problem is we only have one storage driver right now. We need people to, not need people, but we would like to see people make open source storage drivers and then we could, you could just download it for your own project. All right. And then that's the end. Of, if you want to contact me or get involved, my email is marcus.j.wayland.gmail.com. I'm always available. I'll answer your emails. All right. Thank you, guys. That is it. Thank you. Oh, wait. Hold on, actually. Can I show you this real fast? <laughs>